Welcome to Shortcut Reviews, where we get right to the point. And today we're going to be looking at the Mass Drop Perpetua. This is designed by TJ Schwartz, the guy who also designed the CRKT Caligo. Um, that's in a different price category. Uh, that's an expensive knife running on HCR 13 MOV, for example. This is uh, cost me about 120 bucks. It was 110 if you pre-ordered it. And so I knew a little bit about this knife when I ordered it because I actually got it on the second drop. So Mass Drop made about a thousand of them. They sold about 800 and some odd of them. Then they opened up the last remaining ones just about three weeks ago, and I grabbed it then. So next to the Betch made Triage, very similar construction. They both have access style locks. The access lock is now trademarked access lock, but the actual mechanism is no longer under patent protection. Has a very similar blade length edge as a paramilitary too, but more efficient in size, you know, no choil those kind of things. And you know, it's not a huge knife. It's a heavy knife, a little over four ounces. And as always on this channel, weights and measurements will be in the description below. So you can take a look at those right now. But compared to a dollar bill and a zebra pen, it's actually a pretty nice size EDC knife, if not just a little bit heavy. So the only writing is on the blade and we have our mass drop and the serial number 884 and Nitro V. So Nitro V steel is really just basically AEBL with palladium and nitrogen added should give it some more corrosion resistance and some carbides to make the edge last a little bit longer. It's not a super steel by any stretch of the imagination, but it should be easy to sharpen. And they've done a lot of things to make it easy to sharpen and maintainable. So let's look at that. So the first thing they did was they didn't swedge the top of the blade. They left it flat. So if you have a clamp on system, it's going to clamp on there really, really nice. Continuous arc is going to be easy to set with your clamp-on system and, uh, and a beautiful sharpening choil here that is a uh, sharpening notch that's well executed. Uh, there's no smiles there at all. And then they aggressively hollow ground this blade. They actually do it on a CNC machine. And the idea here is, is as you sharpen this knife and the blade profile gets a little shorter, it still stays relatively thin behind the edge. So that's nice as well. And because it's not a super steel, it's actually gonna be relatively easy to get an edge on it. It has really coarse jimping, but, but the right amount of aggressiveness. Doesn't tear up your thumb, but it really does help you lock it in. So I, I, I love the blade. It's got a great blade. It has a super neutral handle. I mean, this choil is almost nothing and the rest of it's neutral. So it, think of it as a Glock without finger grooves. So your fingers can go where they want. They don't get separated weirdly by a bunch of choils on the handle. So that's that's really nice. And and even this sweep is is really nice. Just how the handle runs right into the jimping. Uh, I I think I mean if you look at the dictionary under knife as tool, this is the picture. There's nothing not needed on this knife and everything that is needed. So people complain about screw sizes. It's got T8s holding it together and a T10 on the pivot. That's that's nice. Even T8s on the clip. So really nice construction there. It does have mildly milled out liners. They could have been a little bit more aggressive there and brought the weight down just a little bit more. But again, strength is what this knife is about. Nice hourglass pillars flow through construction, making it easy to clean. Just nice. The liners are, they're okay. You can see just they're not like gapless when you put them together. Actually, the construction's very similar to the Benchmade Triage again. They're not nested liners. I think the Benchmade might fit just a hair better. But nothing wrong there at all. They're smooth and comfortable. Lanyard hole is not tubed, but it is very far away from the blade. So let's talk about some of the complaints that people had and some of the things I knew about going in and one of the things I didn't. Here we go. So the first thing is people complain that the thumb studs are too short. They are just a little bit shorter than the width of the knife. I think that keeps them out of the way. Now, they're also very close to the liner, but if you want to slow roll this knife open, no problem whatsoever. The action's very nice on those Foster's Bronze uh, washers. But if you want to open it, it seems to want the force to go in that direction, not, not out. So you just basically run across the scales like that and just up. And I've had no problems there. Again, 
Axis lock flips down just fine. I cannot spidey flick it. I just can't seem to get the right angle here. But um, again, it's a tool, rolls open just fine. The second thing that people complained about that I knew about was this clip. This clip is just, uh, it's a well-designed clip. I actually like it. It had a ramp that was just a little bit too high on it, but I was able to push that down with my thumb. And so let's take a look at this clip. Here's the clip. I'm gonna push it down. And there's the clip. The clip is junk. I, I don't know what it's made out of. Recycled pop cans, I have no idea. But it is too weak for this knife. And this knife needs a new clip for sure. I do like the way they cut in the clip. They do, it's very similar to the Pilar, the CRKT Pilar. But a new clip is going to be need to be made for this knife or purchased for this knife or something. I might be spending a lot of time with a file to get it to fit in there. I have no idea. But it's junk and I knew it. I knew it going in. Here's what I didn't know going in, and this is just a QC problem. I, I, I love the design. I think TJ Schwartz is a guy to um, to watch. I think Millet had a tough time getting into the production business. Uh, they were kind of a semi-custom shop before. They're trying to get into production businesses, which is great, but they need to hire some QC people. Here, here's what I'm talking about. This side with the maker's mark on it is really nice. It's got a nice texture, nice, nice traction. Almost the same as a regular Power Military 2, maybe... Yeah, about the same. The other side has zero traction. It's almost like the Crewwear Paramilitary tube. There's no, uh, there's just a little bit of a pattern, but it's no traction. I think what happened is the blank got flipped over before they cut it. And so I might guess is once I disassemble this, there'll be texture on the bottom, which is also why we don't have the perfect fit and finish that we would expect. That's what I'm thinking but I don't know for sure. This is a beater knife for me. I'm not gonna return it to uh, mass drop. I don't really wanna deal with it, but it, it is weird that that was able to get through the factory. So again, the two things I knew about was the short thumb studs, doesn't bother me at all. The clip is absolute junk. It's a nice shaped clip. There was nothing wrong with it other than maybe a little bit too high, but so many clips are like that. You just, you know, you bend them, but usually you have to take them off the knife to bend them. Um, this one, and then of course, because it's so weak, it, it loses tension after you a couple times in and out of your pocket. Now let's just take a, a real quick look at it in your pocket. And you know, it's okay. Lanyard hole shows up a bit. Again, working knife, kind of what you expect. Not a problem there, great action. So again, I love the design. I just think the execution wasn't uh, as good as I would have liked it to be. You know, it was 120 bucks for me, 110 bucks for most people who pre-ordered it, but then had to wait a really long time. So it's not an inexpensive knife. I mean, it's not super expensive these days, but it's not inexpensive. But the Nitro V will be interesting. I love the design. Thanks for joining me for actually this rather long shortcut review. The negative ones tend to be longer, I hate to say. And I'm a little bit negative on this knife. It, it's certainly heavier than I will probably carry for the weekday. I think it'll be a great weekend beater knife, uh, cutting a lot of cardboard at the range. Um, actually doing some wood um, processing with it for fires, those kind of things, I think it's going to be great. And I do love knives as tools uh, more than I love knives as man jewelry. So again, thanks for joining me for this walkthrough for the Petua. I think both, the, both Schwartz and Millet are going to be companies to watch. I think, again, this is you know iteration one for Millet uh, on production, and so it's kind of a little bit understandable. I'm in computer science, so we've certainly released some version one code that wasn't as good as we would have liked, and I think they will get their act together. Thanks, guys, and stay sharp.